Welcome back everyone. This is going to be a bonus episode of Banjo-Kazooie. We're already done with the Let's Play, and we've already done the bottles, puzzles for all the bonuses. So last but not least, we have to talk about the Stop and Swap. Yep, we got Stop and Swap and Swip and Swap and Stop and Swip some just, Stop and Swap. Just everything that has to do with the Stop and Swap. So enjoy the video game music as we talk about the Stop and Swap. So. Originally, the Stop and Swap was supposed to be a thing for Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie to where on the old models of the Nintendo 64, you were able to actually take out the game and you only had 10 seconds to switch games and turn it back on so that the memory was stored from the first game was into the Nintendo 64 and you were able to transfer that memory into the next game. But since they made newer models of the Nintendo 64, you literally have a split second to actually do that and it's impossible to switch a game in a split second. So pretty much they just destroyed the stop and swap and they just pretty much cancelled it. This was before the expansion pack of the Nintendo 64, as we all know, that does a complete market failure. Complete. It's horrible. No one used it. It's terrible. There's nobody used it. There's a lot of games that were supposed to be different. This was like the DLC of Nintendo 64. Back in Nintendo 64 was the man. Just pretty, pretty much dominant on the the gaming marketplace competing with the Sony of the PlayStation 1. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Those were times. Those were great times. So now that we're going to be actually taking a look at the stop and swap from Banjo-Kazooie and as well as a little bit glimpse of Banjo-Tooie. Not really much. We got to do the let's play of Banjo-Tooie and I will explain the stop and swap and Banjo-Tooie when the time comes because it's very, very difficult to get to it in the beginning. You just have to learn some moves and go along with that. But once it comes, then I'll tell you guys about the stop and swap and how to get everything. Yep. We're going to go through the whole thing. You're going to love it. It's going to be great. Yeah, we're going to do the Let's Play of Banjo-Tooie right after the stop and swap. So just prepare for the next day or some other day that I actually upload the episode. So first of all, I'm going to teach you guys how to activate it. This is the only way I know how to activate it and it only worked because I accidentally found it on how to activate it. So what you need to do is this is this is the most annoying part out of the whole entire thing. You have to have both Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie downloaded. You have to actually buy it and download it, and then from there you could have you would have to activate it. Yeah, you have to have memory of Tooie being played at some point in order to get the stop and swap stuff unlocked for you to get it in Kazooie and then take it to Tooie. And vice versa. Yeah, that's just the most annoying part. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it right now. Just let me go to the main menu. I love the music, honestly. It's pretty nice. It's great. And who doesn't love Banjo Kazooie? It's, it's amazing. It's just amazing. It's just a fun game you can play for hours and hours on end and just have fun with it. So let me see. I gotta go to, gotta go to my games and gotta go to Banjo Tooie. So. I'm not really too sure that you actually have to beat Banjo Kazooie to actually unlock them because as you saw in the last play that a lot of the things has already been activated even though I have not actually beaten the game. So I'm guessing that you really don't need to beat the game just as long as you actually have the memory of that game. Yeah, it, it seems that you just need to have it, the memory of you owning the game on your hard drive and or playing your save it, state somewhere. And playing it for at least a good five minutes. Yeah, just play it for a little bit. It's a great game, just play it. Because as soon as I beat Banjo-Kazooie, I went on to Banjo-Tooie and just press start. Of course, I had to put the memory in. I got 160 gigabytes left. Yeah. That's a lot of memory. That's okay, good. so I play the game, and what I did notice is that all three picture frames has a stop and swap symbol on them. It's all saying to stop and swap and stop and swap and swap and stop. See, look, empty, game three is empty, and game two is empty, but game one has it. Or game one is actually one I played, but these two, even though they're empty, they still have the stop and swap thing. So as soon as I played Banjo Tooie, it actually activated the stop and swap. So I actually like how they actually brought back the stop and swap. Yeah, it's nice. really nice. It's very nice. So you don't even have to play; it's already activated for you. So you go back to Banjo Kazooie, and then from there you go all to all the places where it would be activated, and it'll appear there. Yep. Anywhere where the eggs and the key. Well, everyone knows what the key is. But where the eggs are, you go, you find them, you get the nice music, which you saw in our Let's Play. <laughs> yeah, there's no way to avoid to it. we had to go through the, some areas to get 100%. There's no way to avoid it. Yeah. So I want you guys to actually try it out. 
if you if you I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask anyone to actually buy it just to check it out. I'm, if you want to buy it just to play the game, that's that's your choice. Yeah, it's but a good game. It's a very good game. Play easy the a game. <laughs> <laughs> easy achievements. You play for the nostalgia. You play for the fun of it. It's just altogether a good choice. It's like playing Mario. It's a good time. You're gonna like it. Just do it. And even Buy if it for you, your kids. And even if you beat the game the first time, play it again. Try to beat your try to beat your best time. So yeah, my best time was four hours, but with less play, I actually had to pause and then check to see if the recording's fine. This is why it took me forever to get this one done. So don't mind the hours on this one. I could beat it in four hours or less. Or oh, your money back. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> get your money back. You, you, you took five hours? Here's some money. There you go. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just take it. <laughs> oh, well. Is that... Here's an interesting fact. With the Banjo-Kazooie on the Xbox 360, there's a way to actually get the Stop and Swap before you even play Banjo-Tooie. Is that if you actually activate all the codes. You could go to GameFAQs and look up the codes. It absolutely works in this game, too. So don't worry about that. But here's the thing. Since it recognizes it as a cheat code, it will actually disable saving. I don't know why. It just disables it. You can't save it. So even if you put in all the codes and actually got everything in there, it just wouldn't work. No cheating. Don't That's, do it. <laughs> I did that for my Let's Play. I spent three hours making, or I think, no, one and a half hours making three extra episodes, or I think it was six. I don't even know how long it took, but all that was just wasted. So yeah. don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. What are you doing? Don't do it. It just apparently it recognizes us being cheating. Stop uh, doing it. <laughs> so here's the first one, Shark Shark Food Island. Good old Shark Food Island. <laughs> the one that you actually see in the ending of it, even Ooh. though my ending was all glitched up. The crazy old glitched out banjo jumping around in the water like a psycho. So It was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it was. That was funny. I didn't think that was going to happen. So 4J, I think you need oh, to fix that. Oh, oh. Banjo didn't make it. 4J was the one that actually tr pretty much... Re re encoded all the memory and all the things into the game. But yeah, we went through their extra credits. You know, you saw it. Yeah, you saw it. If you it. watched it, you saw it. <laughs> if you were like me, like most people, would skip credits. And like, I, I thanks I for think... making the game. I don't need to know your name. I'm not gonna remember you. But thanks for the game. I don't think you can actually skip the credits because on the Nintendo or on the yeah Nintendo 64, you're able to skip the the skip the text. But on the Xbox 360, you were not able to actually skip the text. And so as you guys noticed, there's no egg up here because apparently since I already already got all the eggs in the first save, it will not it will not make the eggs appear in the second or the third save. Yep. So here would be the pink egg or yep. magenta, whichever you want to call it. I don't really care. Hot pink. Fuchsia. <laughs> Speaking of fuchsia, my father and my mother got into a small little argument. It's just a small one. It's just a playful argument. It's like, is it pink or is it fuchsia? Is it pink or fuchsia? I don't I don't understand. It's the rose world, art. The, rose art colors. The world may never know. It doesn't matter. Look at that. No one needs to know. What is the color of the of the underbelly of that crab? Is it pink, salmon, or fuchsia? I don't know, but it looks like it's been cooked already. <laughs> I want to eat some crab. Nah. Mm. We could go to Red Lobster later on. Delicious. <laughs> oh. Give me your crabs. That doesn't sound good when you say it like that, but it's, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. We all know what we are talking about here. <laughs> We're talking about seafood. All right, time for the next stop and swap piece. A little bit of a run. We're going to go on up to Gobi's Valley. Let me see. i got to remember where Gobi Valley is. Wait, wait. You're going the right way. Yeah, I was thinking, I don't matter. It just doesn't matter. I was going to take the cauldron way that are, but nah, it don't matter. It's fine. It's all cool. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> this might be, an, this is going to be a short episode or just, just enough time. It doesn't matter. We'll talk more yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to learn how to do better commentaries because I'm always all over the place. Probably because I had some soda. It's fine. It's a soda. It's absolutely fine. It's your personality. Ah, it's true. You jump from topic to topic faster than I jump from, well, jump. <laughs> I like to jump. <laughs> just do it. It's just, fun. It's it's nice. Just jump. Just stand in your living room and jump. Everyone will think you're crazy. Oh god. Oh, that got rid of my boots. No. <laughs> I can't, I'm surprised he hit you. Ah, oh, stupid scabby. Scabbies. Even though we actually saw the end credits, I forgot half of the names of these little enemies. Very forgettable. Yeah. It's like you just give them nicknames, like this guy, the hand. 
Hanzo. Hanzo? Hansel. Huh. Hansel. Hansel. Where's Gretel then? <laughs> his Hansel. Because he's a giant hand. And his sole purpose is to slap you. Oh, that's his name. Slappa. Sla <laughs> yeah, Slappa. <laughs> there so, you go. So all you have to do is just <laughs> associate it with something else, and then you get it. Because a lot of the names out sooner or later. <laughs> a lot of these names are just puns, really. Yeah, a little bit of pun here and there. So if you play the game the first time without actually playing Banjo Tooie, this door will always, always and forever be locked. So you can't go in there. Super closed up. Yeah, you just like a like a real pyramid. It's closed up. And you just see a camel on there, and you and people thought, did you actually have to bring Gobi here to actually open the door? But nope, it was just there. It was just a picture. Gobi comes here anyway because he's a jerk. Well, without further ado, music time. I just absolutely love this music. It's I great. really do. It's really cool. Oh yeah, I already did this before, but you actually have to hit the switch. You pound the switch open. And then you just pretty much go in here, and then a blue egg would appear. Oh, yeah. I didn't think it was gonna actually save. This is actually a retake, or yeah, a retake of the first one because it got corrupted. The illusion has been ruined by stupid Gobi's Valley. Yeah. Oh, 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 just just go for it. I don't matter. Yeah, you're not gonna be fighting bosses and like you got the double health for a reason. <laughs> Although I I do want to I do want to try one glitch. I want to see if that actually works here. You're able to go inside the tomb without without actually opening it. I think there's a spot here that you actually have to be in. Uh, this, uh... Ah, wait. Where is it? Somewhere right around there. There you is. go. There you that go. That is great. And then you go to the door. Yeah, I can't, I don't know where the door is. Uh, oh, wait, it's that way. Yeah, you go to the door, and that actually is the loading screen to enter. And you're inside, then you can leave. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a tip for you guys if you want to do a little bit of a speed run. Yeah. You don't even need to go to the nose to actually open the door. All I have to do is just go to that little crack right there and just do the lunge at the precise time where you're going to get hit and then you just pretty much scoot yeah. yourself you into damage, that deck. You damage boost yourself right on in there. Yeah. Damage boosting is a great strategy used by a lot of speed runners. Like Stibity Bobo 31. Shout out to him. I saw his I saw his speed run and a lot of the speed running yeah, speed run tricks actually still works in this game. Dude's fast. So I may want to do <laughs> I want to try to do a speed run of it. A lot of the speed runs or a lot of the techniques have been fixed in the, the Xbox 360 version like the slopes. But a lot of them have not been fixed, so you could actually check that. You could actually do all those little spots and glitches. It's very nice. Very nice indeed. It's very cool. <laughs> so let's go to Mad Monster Mansion because there's just two of them already here. Yeah, there's a, they doubled up in Mad Monster Mansion. Don't so, know why. Just whatever. I thought one would be at Mumbles Mountain, but sadly it isn't. Yeah, or Bubble Gloop Swamp. Why not? There, Take there's that a, swamp. There's a lot of spots that you could use a hiding spot for the egg for. Yeah. Oh yeah, interesting fact too is that. If you never, if you don't know where the spots are, it will be kind of difficult for you to find them because on the Nintendo 64 version, the only way to actually get the stop and swap items was to use the cheats. But since you can't use it, well, yeah, you can use it, but it's not going to save on the Xbox 360 version. Yeah. But if you want to know the locations, you have to use the cheats in order enough to know where all the spots are. Yeah, look in the code, man. Game facts. Right in there. You gotta love the hackers and the people who actually like. Camera, work with me here. Oh, no, double up. Come on. Oh, where? There we there go. There you go. Okay. So, hold on. We gotta do this one. There we go. And then the green egg would be on top of Logo. Logo. Logo, Logo, doesn't matter. And kind of funny. Like, we did this, we wanted to hear the music again, so we just came back here and it happens. <laughs> You're the first time in the one that got corrupted. We were talking. We're like, "Oh, let's uh, let's go through to see if the music plays again," and it just keeps playing. Since you can't collect the egg, oh, gurgle bear is much too fat to fit in Logo's mouth. You jerk. Stand in the poo poo water. Yeah, stand in the poo poo water. But yeah, friggin' banjo. Since I think this is honestly a glitch to where you can't get it any other safe on the save files. So if 4J or somebody else who could actually program the game or fix it, let them fix it. Like, I would yeah. like them to fix it, because I want to get the eggs again and again, because it's kind of cool <laughs> to get the eggs the first time, yeah. and when I want to get the second time, it's no longer there, and it, it just, if the special feeling is lost. It's a cool pickup. Yeah, it is pretty cool. But, of course, they're working on Damn. Minecraft, so if they want to work on the older games and make an update for it, that's fine, because I think they actually did an update for Banjo-Tooie, I just don't know what it was before. So here, 
before then, if you played the game the first time, there would be a giant duct tape X on this one. You can't go through no matter what what you try. You can't open it, can't get into it. It's... And then, once you do the code or do the Banjo Tooie thing, the egg would be here. Look at this. Yeah. There you go. And then, oh yeah, I forgot to I forgot to name the colors of the eggs. Okay. Ma oh, you know, you did. You said magenta, and we were, you were talking about magenta and pink or whatever color it was. And then uh, green on top of logo. And, and this one is the cyan color. Cyan. The cyan colored egg. You know what? They have two really close to blue colored eggs, which is I don't know. Yeah. Come on, give me some. Give me some colors. Give, give me a brown egg. <laughs> I'll take it. I don't care. <laughs> it's just whatever. Now let me see. Oh yeah, the blue egg would be in the in the what's it called the sarcophagus, if yeah. you would call it that. Yeah, in Gobi's Valley. So let me see. There's there's supposed to be a mumbo token in one of these. There's interesting fact. They even said it in the speed run demo archives or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, Speed Demos Archive. Speed Demos Archive. It's a great site. Go there. It's awesome. Yeah, you get to see all the legitimate speedrunners there. No task people. Too legit to quit. It's great. It's just, it's just that... I love it. <laughs> it's just, what's it called? That they actually talked about the coding of this game, where if you don't get the... If you get the Mumbo Token in the cellar, the Mumbo Token in the toilet will not appear and vice versa. Because there's a number set of Mumbo Tokens that would appear in one spot. Or one level. Yeah. So they actually uh, program extras just in case if you missed one, you get a second chance of getting it. The Momo tokens are divisible by five in each level. So, I'm still missing a one Momo token. It's it, been haunting him. That's all he talks about now. One day I'm gonna I'm gonna be like 40 years old and then I'm gonna have like a beer in my hand or five o'clock shadow and I'm gonna be like, where is that dang Mumbo token? We're hanging out, just you know, shooting a breeze, and all of a sudden he just. Freaks out of nowhere. Hey, do you think that mumbo token was in Click Clock Wood somewhere? I'm like, no, dude. <laughs> we checked. We checked every spot. You know where you got them, and you know where you got them, but we don't know where the last one is. Uh, I used to be a millionaire before this game ruined me. It's just completely ruined. He, he has no drive to do anything. <sighs> All he does is just sit around and think about mumbo tokens. It's weird. I caught him carving one out of soap. <laughs> Really creepy, actually. Well, I did put a lot of design to it. <laughs> it looks good, though. <laughs> uh, one day I'll find the mumbo token. I'm probably gonna have to look back in my recordings to see if that one spot is where I missed the mumbo token. Yeah, probably. Uh, oh man, you probably swung by it, and your brain was like, "Yeah, you picked it up," but in reality, you didn't. And now you just can't figure out where that particular spot is. Ah, uh, well. So this is the only stop and swap item you were able to actually see in the game where everyone wondered, where, how'd you get in there? What is it? It's like, it's a key. What does that do? how do you get in there? You get up here to grab it and there's a big old key up here. Yep. Just the ice key. You guys know if you actually played the game before. You know that ice key. Yeah, you know that ice key. Yeah, you do. It's we great. all know the ice key. <laughs> And it's kind of funny what Kazooie says about the ice key. Like in the credits or the the ending cutscene, the whatever the intro thing. Yeah. He's like, I know where I want to stick that thing in. <laughs> yeah, in your backpack, you crazy hoarding bird. <laughs> Kazooie's got a lot of problems. Kazooie has a lot of innuendo. Yeah. Just it's Kazooie. What do you expect? You think that she would be ladylike, but nope. She's like a tomboy. She's a crazy bird, man. She just, she just doesn't care. Ooh, oh, 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 hitting that. Oh, nice. Boom. Oh, look at that. There was the outside of the level. You what? saw it for a few seconds. You saw it for a few seconds. You Pause can, the video if you want to. You can get outside of the levels in the uh, the 64 version of the game. The Xbox version they fixed made a it lot a little things. bit harder. I don't know if it's possible. It might not be. Who knows? You have to do a lot of experimentation. But yeah. in the 64, you can do a trick with the B in uh, Click Clock Wood to get out of bounds in a lot of levels, which is really cool. Oh wait, I went to I went the wrong one. Whoops. Yep. Yep, I did. Yeah, idea. buddy. I'll just go back in here. Stupid cauldrons. Ah, just you just don't want to work with me here. These crazy cauldrons. How the heck do you even teleport and, through? And yeah, Grundy only uses the one cauldron. These ones are all like, yeah, friggin', we don't. Uh, we don't get thrown up in and washed clothes in because we're crazy. We don't even be used for a bathroom in one case. Yeah. <laughs> Dingpot's like, man, I gotta get thrown up in, 
do laundry, like nasty. It's nasty. I feel sorry for Dingpot. Poor Dingpot. Well, Quintilda's dead now, so it's fine. Well, she's not dead. She's super dead. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in the next game. She's totally friggin' dead. She's just dead. And they retcon it, bring her back to life. Yeah. It's like, he, uh, the one thing I really hate about the 360 version on the end credits is like, they talked about how amazing, quote unquote, that Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts was. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> The, the original coding was supposed to talk about Banjo Tooie. They should have changed that text because <laughs> nuts and bolts. Oh my goodness, it's terrible. All right, the egg would be here, and this would be the red egg. Good old red egg. It's just honestly, they. Oh wait, there you yeah, go. Yeah, twenty. Max it out. Why not fill it up? Yeah. That. What's it called? What's it called? What was I gonna say? I need to stop drinking sugar, honestly. It just gets my you, mind all over you, the place. You're talking more about how horrible Nuts and Bolts is. and Even though I never played it, <laughs> it was the game that actually pretty much killed off the Banjo-Kazooie series. It That's... was so bad, you didn't need to play the game to know how terrible it was. Just look at the cover all on it. All you had to do was play Banjo-Kazooie or Banjo-Tooie, and by default, you would already know that Nuts and Bolts is terrible. Yeah, it would be a failure. Just look at the cover. They changed everything. Like, they literally changed the game like three to four times. They actually stopped developing it for a while before they picked it up again, and then they just had to finish off the game. They turned it into a crappy kart racer. Heck, I will actually link the... What's it called? I will, I will link... If I could actually find the videos, I will link one of the videos about Banjo 3E, the demo by Eurowind. <laughs> I like his videos. He's cool. Banjo 3E. Yeah, they actually had a GameCube demo yeah. released in one of the video game conventions. They, it was the original graphics. It was originally supposed to be on the GameCube before, of course, Microsoft bought them out and all the other stuff just happened to it happen. Was super hype. There yeah. was hype all over the place. Everyone wanted it. Yeah, it was, gr oh, it was great. I wanted to play that. that. I, would, I don't even care if I play like a 30-minute demo of the Banjo 3E just as long as I get to play it. It'll be t it'll be way better than just playing Banjo Nuts and Bolts. Yeah. Maybe one day I'll actually do a let's play of Na Banjo Nuts and Bolts. And <laughs> oh, I hope not. <laughs> if I do, I'll just be making fun of it. <laughs> the game will drive a grown man to madness. <sighs> I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of people like, "Hey, don't knock on it. It's actually a pretty good game." No, it's not. You don't. Uh, you, you don't even know. If that is, if you think that's a good game, you don't know what a good game is. Terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. What they changed doing? the whole entire aspect of Banjo Kazooie. You just, it's just not the same anymore. That's yeah. the main argument. It's just not the same anymore. They didn't make it any better. It's just different. Yes, it's different. We need to try it out before we knock at it, but just let's be honest. It's, it's hard to make a game that is only worse than every other game of the same type before it. It's just like. That's impressive. It's just like saying Resident Evil 5 is the best out of all of them. No, it's not. It, they just, they pretty much dumbed down the survival horror. Now it's just more or less action only. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's terrible. At least Resident Evil 4 actually, it was pretty much the peak of survival horror. A much better example would be like saying, uh, Mario's History Adventure is better than Super Mario World. Oh yeah, Time Machine. Mario's, ti Mario's, Mario's Time Mario's Time Machine. Machine. You would it is better than Super Mario World. When you look at Mario's Time Machine, you do the same thing you do when you look at Nuts and Bolts is what happened? This is unlike anything ever. It's the worst thing on the planet. All right. <laughs> last one right here. The yellow egg would appear right here. Yeah, you come on into Nabnut's place. We check out his lady friend. He's hmm. dreaming about acorns because he's an idiot. But you have a pink squirrel right here. And yeah. you're dreaming about nuts. Yeah. He's got problems, man. You don't even know where the pink squirrel came from. She just appeared out of nowhere. I just... For me, when I played the game, I was always like, she must have been the squirrel that was building that house that you never see anybody use. And then Nabnut was like, hey, you know, I got all these acorns, and my place is already finished. You can come spend the winter with me. And she agreed for some reason. Apparently they don't <laughs> wake up. They just don't wake up. Just slam them. They're like, nope, they're good. They're out cold, man. Yeah. But that's all the stop and swap? 
Per you, uh, you can check out the ones you got and the colors of them in the menu. Yep, you just go to view totals, and then you go all the way to the end. There you go, stop right. and swap. You got cyan, magenta, pink, fusion, whatever you want to call it. You got blue, green, red, and yellow, and then the ice key. You got it the has, key. It really has no purpose in the first game, but it was supposed to activate other things like, I don't know, I, I forgot what it was exactly, but it was supposed to unlock new things that you can use for Banjo-Tooie, and just pretty much, it's like... Take, having an advantage. I don't know what's called. Like you unlock yeah. the secrets, you unlock more things for the game. You get a little extra stuff. Yeah, pretty it's much. Nice. It's extras. It's not needed, but it's nice to have. It's like uh, pre-ordering something stupid. That's you don't kinda... need what they give you, but it's, it's okay like a to have it. It's like whatever, it's the same price. You get something out of it, you're good to go. Yeah, like when like everyone who pre-ordered Assassin's Creed Three and then later felt like an idiot because you didn't actually get anything. Yeah. Stuff like that. <laughs> so, they actually used three of the eggs and the ice key in Banjo-Tooie. I think they used the blue, the yellow, and I think it was the pink. And you do use the ice key, of course. And again, once we get to Banjo-Tooie, I'll explain to it once I learn all the moves, and that'll be a separate video on itself, and then it'll follow up in the Let's Play, explain, and I'll explain, like, I already did this in this video, so go check that out. Go check it out, man. It's good. Hey, on a side note, or random, the second dust, the second dust cloud thing looks like a face. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does look like a face. And in our previous recording, the red egg was spinning faster than all the other ones. But now the green egg is spinning the fastest. Yeah, and the yellow egg is spinning at a pretty good pace as well. It's kind of weird. Yeah. And they even they have different directions too. Was it all? Was stop and swap always spelled like that? Yeah. Swap. Is yeah, with an O. Swoop. Stop and swap. Wop. Stop and swap. Yeah, people misspelled it all the time because they spelled it differently. I think there was like a... Probably there was something that actually... Well, yeah, because then it would be stop and swap. Stop, no, swap is actually with an A. Swap, yeah. But still, I think swap, that something swap. else was spelled stop and swap, so they didn't want to take that name either. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the story behind the name I never, change. I never noticed that it was SWOP. Or it's probably because they wanted to actually make it rhyme with stop. So the OP and stop, stop and with the OP and swap. So swap. it's a gimmick. Stop and swap. What was I saying before? I uh, guess. Swap and stop. <laughs> in Banjo, in Banjo Nuts and Bolts, they actually, uh, they, there's actually things that you do with the eggs, but it's just completely, utterly useless. Really, it's just you get something special for your car, I think, and you get a nice little thing in the end. But it's just for the trouble. It's just not worth it. You, you 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 already know it's a bad game when what you get is car parts and something else. What I don't is, remember exactly. They why? have it on the wiki, which I need to post that in the description <laughs> below so you could actually read more about the stop and swap. <laughs> what was it? What is it a cart game? Holy crap! Is that that's like I bad? Said, they like I said they changed the game three times, three to four times, and they just finally stuck with what they had left. That's like going Super Mario World 1, Super Mario World 2, and then Super Mario World, the extravaganza party that has nothing to do with anything. Although Super Mario World has a lot of Easter eggs and a lot of secrets that not many people know about. It's a fun game. Yeah, some people discovered it like years after it was ended. Like the secret levels and why well, if you do all of that and then you go to this spot and that spot? It's just... How do people figure these out later on in life? Dedication. It's just like the Easter egg that was hidden for 17 years. Yeah. So it's like... People love games. People love games enough to actually put more dedication to finding all the secrets. Some of them is just... It happens. Which Some people hack the game and look in the coding yeah. too. Which is why people love games. Which is why you shouldn't cop out and crappily develop a game like Nuts and Bolts. When, at, like, at what point do you decide you can't make this game because it's terrible and you just have to bite the bullet and fire a bunch of people? Because it might be half their fault anyway. So oh. just fire them. Or it just probably be the fault of the leading people because they did yeah. buy out Rare Some... and with that with the Rare properties and they want them to make a yeah. game that they want, not what should have been made. And a bunch of people leave and there's creative differences, but it's like someone's got to take responsibility for making... A horrible piece of crap. They just don't care. No, just they don't care. But I care. An example, Connect Games. Yeah, come on, Connect. 
Just stop already. Microsoft, no one wants to buy Kinect. Stop it. Please. Just seriously. At least a few games is fine. Like, I can understand, like, the hype for it. Just make a few games. You don't have to make, like, 20,000, like, I don't know, 100 different Kinect games just to keep advertising Kinect, and now they're forcing you to have the Kinect for the Xbox One. I want you to keep mocap out of my games. I don't want motion. I don't want sound sensitivity. I don't want to jiggle crap around when I play a game. I just I want to just use a whole want controller to play a game. with a controller. That's how it should be. I want to play a good game on my couch with the lights off for 16 hours without eating, sleeping, or pooping. And then as soon as I stop, I realize that I'm about to die and I have to do all those things in the proper order. Otherwise, I end up crapping myself. That's what I want <laughs> as a hardcore gamer. Uh, you know the feeling. Yeah, you guys know the feeling. <laughs> you want to play a game hours and hours at a time, and you don't want to spend the time just dancing around the front of the Kinect, and people will look at you weird. It's like, what the heck are you doing? When you get so into the game, you stop eating, and you forget about it, and then you stop, and you're like, man, why did I starve myself? I'm friggin' hungry. <laughs> but keep keep in mind, you need to eat. Because there's people who actually died playing a lot of games just get... hours and hours at a time, like that guy who played, Di- was it Diablo 3? I think there was a guy who played Diablo 3. For three he... days straight in an internet cafe, and he just died because he was he was just mal... malnourished. Malnourished and, and passed out. I know that people have done that with... Exhaustion. Uh, Evercrest. Ever, not Evercrest. That's not a game. Ever... <laughs> <laughs> Everquest. There you go. And people have done it... I've heard people do it with WoW, where they, they get into a lot of health and mental issues. It's like... I love that dedication in the game. And but I control yourself. Self-control, people. I understand that those games can suck you in. I used to play World of Warcraft, and then I'm like, hey, guess what? I can't afford this bull crap, And it's bull crap, so I stopped. I'm like, I'm done with this. It's crap. Just keep buying more and more expansions. I don't, I don't know how anyone... After not playing for a long time, I don't know how people do it still. I'm like, wow. Dedication. I love it. The most I've dedicated was 16 hours of just playing RuneScape. I love the game community, man. Those people have dedication. More than me. I gotta back out every now and again. I can't handle it. And then there's gonna be an argument. If they put that much dedication (laughs) to a video game, why don't they put that much dedication to something actually beneficial? Yeah. People put dedication into your games. So developers, you should do the same. Okay? Yeah. Especially the huge fan base that it was once, Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, and now with Banjo Nuts and Bolts, you just lost it all. Yeah. <sighs> Terrible. If anything else, if you're gonna make the, well, I've been told, like, the original developers of Rare are no longer there, it's just another, just another group of people. It's- but if they were smart enough, they would try to locate the original developers of Rare and have them come together and make or remake with the best games that they ever made. I'm pretty sure that's gonna boost up their market and boost it. up everything else. I'd I'll, buy the crap out of it. I would totally buy Banjo 3E if they actually made it. The original Banjo 3E. I'd buy four copies and hand them out. Why not? I'll make. I'll do a giveaway. If they actually <laughs> do a Banjo 3E game, I'll buy four of them and give them all out. It's gonna be great, man. You heard it from here, people. Yeah. So we did a lot of rambling. We did a lot of <laughs> Rim, <laughs> ram ram rambling ranting rambling this is the stop and swap people just i want to know if this is true if anyone actually does in fact buy both banjo kazooie and banjo tooie if you ever do so let me know first of all just play banjo kazooie about a good 10 minutes get the feel for the game save quit then go on to banjo tooie start the game get the feel of it even though it's this exact same thing there's not much new things you learn as the basic moves then just come back to oh wait what was I going to say? Ah, oh, yes. Banjo Tooie, save, exit, come back to Banjo Tooie, see if the stop and swap signs are up there, and if so, you have successfully activated stop and swap for Banjo Kazooie, and doing so, you're able to actually access the eggs before you even beat the game. Yep. And since you already know where all the spots are, this is a good place for you, anyways. And then you can just get that, and then you're completely and utterly 100% of the game. You got just, it. Just as long as you get all the mumbo tokens. <laughs> Mumbo tokens! You haunt my dreams. It's there's, fine. There's 40, okay, people? There's 40 Mumbo tokens in the game which are utterly, completely and utterly useless. It's just for you to have. Yep. So make sure you look for them all. You need two Jiggies and 40 tokens. And then you're done. 100%, completely 100% of the game. And again, with Banjo Tui, we're going to do a Let's Play of it. Once I get all the moves, I'll make an in depth video on how to activate the Stop and Swap and find the items in 
Banjo Tooie, and then we will get to see a very great thing about Banjo, or sorry, a great thing about Kazooie and Banjo Tooie once we get the stop and swap items. No spoilers. No spoilers yet, but it's gonna be nice, and it's kind of game breaking at that point too. But until then, let's just end it off here before we go to another rant. <laughs> yeah. Game over. Oh. Sad, sad, sad. And good part is, since you beat the game, you don't see Gruntilda laughing, so she doesn't get the last laugh. Nope. That's actually a pretty cool thing that they added into that game. Alright, return to the arcade, so with that being said, have a nice day everybody. I'm Sword of Kings of Zero, that was Kyle, and we will see you in the Banjo-Tooie Let's Play.